The idea of using wastewater uh, as a way to monitor for uh, viruses uh, has been around for a long time. Uh, and the application of it to SARS-CoV-2 or COVID-19 uh, is what is different this time. One of the goals that we had was to uh, be able to have a safe semester for everybody, uh, be able to stay on campus as long as possible, uh, given unknowns. We wanted the information that we were going to get to be actionable. That, could, that is, you could actually take that information and turn it into decisions. Uh, and those decisions were about uh, how do we test students on campus uh, for the coronavirus? Uh, and could we use wastewater to help us target that kind of testing? Uh, so in order to do that, you need a couple of things. One, you need a process that is simple. Uh, you need a process that is robust to supply chain issues because uh, a lot of the reagents and uh, chemicals and things like that that are required to detect the virus uh, have been in short supply. Uh, you also needed to be able to have a quick turnaround. So it needed to be able to be done uh, same day results uh, if possible. Uh, and so we, we sourced all of that material. Uh, one of the primary things that we had to source were samplers or auto samplers to be able to actually collect samples around campus. Um, and then other equipment that uh, we needed to use just to streamline processes. Uh, HOPE has a strong tradition of research uh, and research with undergraduates uh, leads the country for decades in this area. Uh, and so that really set us up to be able to, to make this pivot, uh, to be able to do something like this. And so a lot of the equipment was already around. Uh, and we leveraged expertise and we leveraged uh, process and we leveraged uh, equipment that we had. Uh, we needed to have people, uh, so the first thing is uh, to have uh, have a personnel around that could in fact process samples on a daily basis. Um, it's not a part-time job, it's a full-time job. So we're able to tap into some great students uh, that ha had been in research programs and were basically trained right off the bat uh, to be able to do this. So we hired four uh, post-baccalaureate positions, uh, so students that graduated last May. So the information that we're able to get daily on the wastewater levels for SARS-CoV-2 allows us to translate that into action, right? So we can take that information to the testing team that's on campus, that's in charge of uh, directing the resources that we have for testing students. Uh, and we can take that information and tell them what's going on. They can, we can make a recommendation, oh, we should test zone four because we're seeing a rise in the level that we hadn't seen before. Um, and then what would happen is that the testing team would set up the logistics to actually inform students that they need to get tested. Students then sign up for times and then they get tested the next day. Uh, and this has actually occurred. So we've been successful in this uh, several times. Uh, our first instance of it was mid-September. Uh, so a few weeks into the semester, uh, we saw a rise in one of the zones uh, in the SARS-CoV-2 signal after having seen zero signal uh, whatsoever for the previous couple of weeks. Uh, that was an indication to us that we needed to be concerned. Uh, and we identified five cases uh, during that week. Um, and we were able to isolate those students' contact trace and quarantine the students that were close contacts. The consequence of that is if you can do the contact tracing correctly, right, you can actually pull those people out of circulation so they can't uh, spread the disease to others that would have caught it otherwise. Based on the success that we've had with the wastewater monitoring approach during the fall semester, uh, this has allowed us to make the decision to continue this type of monitoring into the spring semester and potentially beyond. Uh, and the idea is to use this as uh, a more prominent piece of the decision-making process for where to target available testing for individuals uh, because we've seen that it's worked. Uh, we know that it has allowed us to identify people uh, that have COVID-19 uh, that we would not have otherwise known about. Uh, this has to have had the consequence of reducing the number of cases overall that we've had on campus during the fall semester. And so we'd like to continue that process uh, going forward.